Okay, it's uh, day two of the 2024 gardening saga. And uh, what we're going to start off with today is uh, by planting some of our bare root raspberry plants that uh, we've been able to obtain. So there are some, and there are some um, uh, strawberries in there as well. But it's the raspberries that we're going to be planting, and we'll be planting them in the uh, the raspberry patch so um, those of you who haven't seen this before uh, we do actually we we ended up with uh, a little bit of um, uh, damage quite a bit of damage uh, from our snow plow um, people uh, so all you all of the um, gravel that you see here was actually picked up from our driveway and deposited here by the snowplow and it actually goes all the way up to this plum tree. Uh, this plum tree was at one point buried under some uh, uh, a snowbank but in behind here you'll actually see that we have a number of raspberry plants so there's one there's another one there's another one there's one there's one uh, there's another one over there, another plum tree, and then I think there's another row of raspberries back here. So there's raspberry cane, there's raspberry cane over there, and there's raspberry cane there, there, and there. Oh, and here's some little ones. So raspberries, because they um, have uh, roots that go, or uh, yeah, I don't know if they're rhizomes or exactly what they are but they have underground stems and so you'll actually find them filling in the spaces very very quickly um, and so there's a lot of that happening here uh, a lot there raspberry plants everywhere here and so we'll have to spend a little time making sure that they get trained to where we want them to be because otherwise if you allow them to grow in all of these areas eventually you can't get in because of all the uh, the thorns on the rambles uh, on the raspberry bushes themselves so we'll have to take a little bit of care making sure that they are planted where we want them to go and the ones that are in between the rows uh, we walk on them or we remove them um, on a regular basis Anyway, so we'll be putting raspberry plants in here first and then uh, moving on to uh, the rest of the gardens. So the plan today is to start broad corking. So for those of you who haven't seen this kind of treatment before in gardens, uh, this is a broad fork and basically what it does is go down uh, into the soil by about eight inches or so. That's the uh, the length of the tines, or maybe they're a little bit longer, they're about a foot or so. And uh, we're not actually turning the soil over. What we're really doing is just uh, uh, loosening it up. Um, so you're actually aerating it and allowing for uh, water percolation into the uh, the soil itself. And so we'll do this every six or eight inches all the way down the bed. And we're going to be starting with this bed here uh, for now because we're going to be putting carrots in this. And so we we're prepping it for uh, uh, putting the carrots in. And then we'll be uh, moving to the back garden over there. Um, and we'll be prepping it for potatoes and squash and... Uh, I can't remember exactly what's on the plan. Uh, Patricia has a, a plan drawn out and we'll have to take a look at that before we publish this one as well. Um, over top of the broad forked soil we will be putting um, the materials that are underneath this tarp which is actually cricket um, manure. So there's a cricket farm not too far from here and we've purchased um, I don't know how many yards of cricket um, material, but you can see that it's very, very loose, very fine, 
and so we're going to put that over over top of the uh, um, the beds and we'll be planting directly into that uh, so that's what you're going to be seeing today and uh, we'll bring you along for uh, the journey um, so hold on tight here we go Okay, it's Roland from East Marsh Acres, and uh, we're here to um, do some work of uh, the prep work for the garden itself. The uh, the garden. Um, I'll, I'll start on this row uh, that I broad forked yesterday. Uh, I'll show you what broad forking is all about um, when we get to other other rows. But I need to put some um, cricket. Uh, compost on this um, so there's a cricket farm not too far from us and uh, we've got um, a couple of yards of uh, uh, cricket compost and we're going to be putting that on top of the, uh, the soil that's already here um, it's quite loose uh, because we've been doing what we call lasagna uh, method of uh, uh, building up the beds and that is we're putting layers of compost uh, soil, compost, soil, uh, as we're going along. And uh, uh, the ground itself um, that we have here is uh, primarily fill. So it's just uh, materials that have been brought from other uh, locations and brought into uh, this place because um, uh, we wanted to build up the height. Um, this was done before we actually purchased the, uh, the land and it's been sitting here for uh, probably 20 years or so. Um, but as a consequence, there's lots of rock and uh, um, brick, all kinds of uh, materials in here that take up volume, but don't certainly don't add to uh, capabilities of being able to actually grow stuff in it. So we've been uh, putting our growing beds on top of uh, the land itself. The land essentially becomes a foundation then. Um, it's been very successful. Uh, we've had uh, three years of uh, uh, growth of uh, plants, um, garden produce, etc. And uh, we're going to continue on with that method because it's uh, relatively simple. Um, by the way, we're doing no-till as well, so essentially we're not turning over the soil. I can remember spending hours uh, when I was a young child um, with a spade and uh, uh, a teenager um, and uh, my job would be to uh, turn over the entire garden uh, which was backbreaking work at the time and uh, my, my father had uh, a bad back and yeah, I couldn't do it so I was elected 
or voluntold, uh, something voluntold, there we are, that's the terminology. Um, didn't particularly appreciate it at the time. Uh, this method, no-till method, so we d never turn over the soil. We just aerate it with a broad fork and then we put uh, additional um, materials on top. It's uh, quite successful and it does work uh, wonders. Um, so that's what we're going to continue. And uh, yeah, first, uh, before I can put the cricket compost on, I have to uh, get the um, wheelbarrow into shape. Uh, so I've got uh, three-in-one oil, uh, all the bearings, and uh, see what we can do to get it ready to go. We'll take you along for the ride, so come along. Hey, it's Roland from East Mar and Marsh Acres. The end of uh, a couple hours of uh, working and just like to show you what we ended up getting done. Um, so I've marked out the strawberries that we've transplanted. In some cases they're uh, newly acquired for us. Um, so the, you can see the Nexicom flags um, and this is the end of the row of uh, strawberries. So you can see strawberries and asparagus that are intermingled with each other. Interplanting all the way around until so we get to here and those are brand new ones. And we've taken the blueberries that were here. Oh, here's another strawberry yet. So this is the one that Rachel had in a pot uh, last year that we transplanted for two years ago. Um, anyways, here's elderberries, that one, and that one, and that one, and this is a blueberry, no, a uh, pawpaw. So this is a pawpaw tree. Uh, it's a fruiting tree uh, that's native to this area uh, of Ontario. Um, here's another pawpaw, and then here's a blueberry. It's going to get inundated by thorns, thistles. Bring them down a bit. It'll stop them for a while. And another blueberry. And another blueberry. And a fourth blueberry. Uh, so there's three elderberries uh, that I showed you. And then there are nanny berries. So that's this one. 
and there's another one over here. Very, very small, but you can see the leaves on the bottom of the, uh, the plant. So it'll come. Oh, there's some leaves a little further up yet already as well. Good. Um, so we're getting some success. This is a pear tree. Looks like it'll do okay. And another pear tree. And a third pear tree. And so what we'll do with these. Oh, yeah, so what are these plants that we planted at the bottom of the pear trees? Comfrey. Comfrey. There's one there. And there's two at the bottom there. And there's one there. Nice little uh, flowers. Uh, apparently it's got a number of other properties. I can't remember if they're medicinal or if they are good for tea or eating. What this for. So Trisha is taking triple mix, which is this pile that we've got here, and the sand left over from the carrots last year, and she's going to put some cricket manure in there as well, and then put that on the top of the carrot layer. And that's where the, yeah, so then it's got some soft stuff to start germinating. And uh, so we'll <coughs> lay that down on there. So 